Ethan Bennett had always been the sort of husband people admired. At family gatherings, his quiet demeanor contrasted with Olivia's vibrant energy, creating a picture of a perfectly balanced couple. He was introverted, often staying in the background, his soft-spoken nature endearing him to Olivia's family. They saw him as the gentle soul who had grounded Olivia, who was a whirlwind of ambition and life. Ethan's humility and willingness to blend into the fabric of Olivia's life made him a beloved son-in-law. He would often be seen helping Olivia's parents around their house, fixing a leak or repainting a room, always with a quiet smile that made them feel they had gained a son, not just a son-in-law. Olivia Bennett, in contrast, was the light of the room wherever she went. She was the type of woman who drew people in with her laughter, her stories, and her genuine interest in those around her. Olivia had carved out a successful career in marketing, a field where her creativity and people skills flourished. Her colleagues admired her, her friends adored her, and her family loved her fiercely. She had grown up in a small town where everyone knew each other, and she had always been the one people looked up to, the golden child who had made something of herself without losing touch with her roots. The town itself was a picturesque place, nestled in a valley surrounded by rolling hills and dense woods. It was the kind of place where neighbors still greeted each other on morning walks and children played in the streets until dusk. The town had its quirks, a yearly fair, a small farmer's market every weekend, and a strong sense of community. It was a place where people felt safe, where life moved at a slower pace, allowing everyone to breathe in the beauty of their surroundings and the comfort of knowing their neighbors by name. Ethan and Olivia had settled into this town after getting married, choosing it for its charm and the close proximity to Olivia's family. They bought a small, cozy house on a quiet street, where they lived a life that seemed, to everyone who knew them, perfectly idyllic. Ethan, who worked remotely as an IT specialist, spent most of his days at home while Olivia's job kept her busy and often out of the house. Their neighbors would see them together on weekends. Perhaps having breakfast at the local cafe or taking a walk in the nearby park, always seeming at ease in each other's company. Beneath the surface of this seemingly perfect life, subtle cracks were beginning to show. Olivia's close friend, Sophie, was one of the few who noticed the growing distance between her and Ethan. Having known each other since childhood, Sophie could sense when something was wrong, even when Olivia tried to hide it. In recent months, Olivia had become more withdrawn, less like her usual self, and preoccupied with thoughts she wasn't ready to share openly. During one of their rare, candid conversations, Olivia finally confided in Sophie about the struggles she was facing in her marriage. She admitted that she was desperately trying to save her relationship with Ethan, clinging to the hope that they could rebuild the bond they once had. She revealed her deep desire to start a family, to conceive a child, something she believed might bring them closer together. But every time she brought up the topic with Ethan, he became distant, almost shutting down, refusing to discuss it. Olivia confessed that it was more than just his reluctance to talk. It was as if Ethan was becoming a stranger to her emotionally unavailable and increasingly detached. What troubled Olivia even more was Ethan's growing helplessness in the bedroom. She whispered to Sophie that he couldn't even perform his duties as a husband, which only added to the strain on their marriage. Olivia felt trapped between her longing for a child and her frustration with Ethan's indifference, his inability to connect with her on the most basic level. Sophie could see the pain in Olivia's eyes the quiet desperation of a woman trying to hold on to a marriage that was slipping through her fingers. Sophie observed this change in Olivia, the way she hesitated before answering questions about her marriage, how she grew quieter about her future plans, and the moments when she would catch Olivia staring off into the distance, lost in thoughts she couldn't bear to voice. It was clear that beneath the surface of Olivia's life, a storm was brewing, one that could no longer be ignored. The morning of Olivia's disappearance began like any other. She had left the house early for her usual morning run, dressed in a light blue tank top and black leggings, her blue running shoes laced up tight. She run down the street, her bright pink running jacket tied around her waist, his expression unreadable as she faded from view. That was the last time anyone saw Olivia Bennett. When Olivia didn't return home that evening, Ethan's concern began to grow. He called her phone repeatedly, but each attempt went straight to voicemail. As midnight approached, and still no sign of Olivia, 
Ethan found himself pacing the living room, his mind racing with possibilities. He tried to reassure himself. Maybe she had met up with friends after her run, or had gotten caught up in something and lost track of time. But as the hours ticked by without any word from her, the unease in his stomach deepened into a gnawing fear. The next morning, Ethan called Sophie, his voice trembling as he told her that Olivia hadn't come home. Sophie's heart sank. She had never heard Ethan sound so frantic, so lost. She urged him to call the police immediately, and within hours, the small town was buzzing with the news of Olivia's disappearance. Ethan played the part of the grieving husband to perfection. He was at the forefront of the search efforts, organizing volunteers to comb through the nearby woods and fields, distributing flyers with Olivia's picture on them, and speaking to the media with tears in his eyes. The town rallied around him, moved by his apparent grief and desperation. People brought food to his house, offering words of comfort and hope. The local cafe, where Olivia and Ethan were regulars, put up a poster with her face on it, a candle burning next to it as a symbol of hope. But as the days turned into weeks with no sign of Olivia, Sophie couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. She began to notice small inconsistencies in Ethan's behavior. His rehearsed answers when people asked him about Olivia, the way he seemed to avoid direct eye contact, and the subtle shifts in his tone when he spoke about her in the past tense, rather than the present. Sophie's unease grew when she remembered the things Olivia had confided in her, the dissatisfaction with her marriage, and the sense that Ethan was trying to control every aspect of her life. Sophie's suspicions were further fueled by a conversation she had with Mark, a colleague of Olivia's. Mark mentioned in passing that Olivia had seemed stressed in the weeks leading up to her disappearance, that she had been more secretive than usual, and that she had started to withdraw from her usual social circle. He also noted, with some discomfort, that Ethan had come by Olivia's office a few times recently, something he had never done before. These details gnawed at Sophie, and she couldn't shake the feeling that Ethan knew more than he was letting on. As the community continued to rally around Ethan, Sophie's suspicions remained her own, unspoken and festering. She watched as the town poured their support into Ethan, unaware of the darkness she believed was lurking beneath his sorrowful facade. The longer Olivia remained missing, the more Sophie became convinced that the truth was far more sinister than anyone was willing to admit. Ethan, for his part, continued to maintain his role as the heartbroken husband. He attended every vigil held in Olivia's honor, his face a mask of grief that cracked only when he thought no one was watching. He gave interviews to the local news, pleading for Olivia's safe return, his voice thick with emotion. But behind closed doors, when the cameras were off and the house was empty, Ethan's calm, calculated nature began to emerge. He meticulously planned his next steps. Knowing that the longer Olivia remained missing, the more pressure would build, and that he would need to be ready when the dam finally broke. The disappearance of Olivia Bennett had shaken the small town to its core. The sense of security that had once defined the community was replaced by a creeping sense of dread, a fear that the truth about what had happened to Olivia was far darker than anyone could have imagined. And as the days continued to pass without any sign of her, that fear only grew, leaving everyone to wonder what secrets were lurking just beneath the surface of their seemingly perfect lives. The police investigation into Olivia's disappearance began with routine questioning, but it wasn't long before discrepancies in Ethan's account of events started to surface. Marie Collins, a seasoned investigator known for her sharp instincts, was assigned to the case. From the moment she first interviewed Ethan, something about his demeanor struck her as off. He was cooperative, almost too much so, answering questions with a calmness that didn't quite fit the gravity of the situation. His eyes, though red from what seemed like tears, held a certain detachment that made her uneasy. As the investigation progressed, Investigator Collins and her team began to dig deeper into Ethan's alibi for the night of Olivia's disappearance. Ethan had claimed he spent the evening at home, working on a project for his IT job before going to bed early. But when the police checked his work records, they found no activity from his computer that night. In fact, his laptop had been shut off for most of the evening, only turning on briefly around midnight, a time Ethan had claimed to be asleep. Further scrutiny revealed that Ethan had made several unaccounted-for trips in the weeks leading up to Olivia's disappearance. Surveillance footage from a gas station on the outskirts of town showed Ethan filling up his car late one night, 
contradicting his statement that he hadn't left the house. The timeline didn't add up, and the more the police looked into it, the more inconsistencies they found. Ethan's phone records indicated that he was far from home, opposing his claim that he hadn't left the house. As they continued to investigate, the police made a shocking discovery. Ethan had been leading a double life. Buried deep within his financial records were transfers to a hidden bank account, one that Olivia had no knowledge of. The account had been opened under a pseudonym and was used to pay for an apartment in a town several hours away. When the police visited the apartment, they found it meticulously clean, almost sterile, with no personal items except for a single framed photograph of Ethan and a woman who was not Olivia. This revelation cast Ethan in a completely different light. The quiet, grieving husband was now a man with secrets, secrets that painted him as someone far more complex and possibly dangerous than anyone had imagined. The investigation took on a new intensity as the police began to suspect that Ethan's hidden life might be connected to Olivia's disappearance. Behind Ethan's seemingly gentle exterior, the police began to see hints of something darker. Interviews with Olivia's friends and family revealed that Ethan had always been somewhat withdrawn, even in social settings. While Olivia was the life of the party, Ethan was content to blend into the background, rarely drawing attention to himself. But this introversion, combined with his newly uncovered secrets, suggested a man who was not as harmless as he appeared. Psychological profiling of Ethan suggested a deeply troubled individual, someone who might have felt increasingly threatened by Olivia's success and independence. The rented apartment and secret bank account hinted at a man who was trying to escape, to carve out a part of his life that Olivia had no control over. But why? Was it simply a need for independence, or was there something more sinister at play? As the investigation continued, the police began to focus more on Ethan's mental state. Could he have been driven to commit an unthinkable act out of fear or jealousy? The more Inspector Collins uncovered, the more she became convinced that the key to solving Olivia's disappearance lay within Ethan's troubled psyche. But with no concrete evidence linking him directly to a crime, she knew it would take more than suspicion to bring him down. Sophie started by looking into Ethan's past, hoping to find anything that could shed light on his behavior. What she found shocked her. Before meeting Olivia, Ethan had been involved in a relationship that ended abruptly and mysteriously. The woman, a former colleague named Elise, had left town suddenly, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions. No one knew why she had left or where she had gone, but there were rumors of a heated argument between her and Ethan just days before her departure. Sophie tracked down some of Elise's old friends, who recalled how she had seemed increasingly isolated and fearful in the months leading up to her disappearance. The parallels between Elise's story and what was now happening with Olivia were too striking to ignore. As Sophie pieced together these disturbing details, the police uncovered another twist that complicated the investigation. It turned out that Olivia had been having an affair with Mark, her colleague. The affair had been discreet, but not completely secret. Some of their co-workers had noticed the way Mark and Olivia had grown closer, sharing long lunches and working late together. When Inspector Duval questioned Mark, he admitted to the affair but insisted that it had ended weeks before Olivia's disappearance. He claimed that Olivia had wanted to focus on her marriage despite its problems and had ended things with him amicably. However, there was something about Mark's demeanor that raised red flags. He seemed genuinely distraught over Olivia's disappearance, but there was also a certain defensiveness in his tone, a wariness that made Inspector Duval wonder if he was hiding something. When the police searched Mark's apartment, they found no direct evidence linking him to the crime, but the discovery of love letters from Olivia suggested that their relationship had been more intense than he had let on. As Mark became a person of interest, Sophie's suspicions about Ethan only deepened. She was convinced that Ethan had known about the affair and that his calm exterior was a facade masking deep-seated rage. Sophie remembered how Olivia had once mentioned feeling like she was being watched, how she had started locking her phone and being more secretive, even with Sophie. Could Ethan have been spying on Olivia, monitoring her every move? The investigation into Ethan's activities revealed that he had indeed been keeping tabs on Olivia. He had installed tracking software on her phone and computer, reading her messages and monitoring her calls. He knew about the affair long before Olivia had planned to tell him, and he had been carefully plotting his response. 
Ethan's meticulous nature meant that he had documented everything, creating a detailed log of Olivia's movements and communications, but despite this, Ethan maintained his innocence, insisting that he had only done it out of love, trying to protect Olivia from making a mistake. As these revelations came to light, the community's perception of Ethan began to shift. The man they had once seen as a devoted, grieving husband was now viewed with suspicion. Whispered conversations and pointed glances followed him wherever he went. The neighbors who had once brought him meals and offered their condolences now avoided him, their pity replaced by fear and distrust. Under the weight of increasing scrutiny, Ethan's composure began to crack. He became more erratic, lashing out at reporters who questioned him and retreating further into his isolated world. His calm, methodical nature was giving way to paranoia and desperation. As Sophie and the police closed in on the truth, the question remained, how much longer could Ethan maintain his innocence before the carefully constructed facade of his life collapsed entirely? The search for Olivia had stretched on for days, a harrowing period marked by growing despair among those who loved her. The small town was gripped with tension, each passing hour amplifying the dread that had settled over the community. Then, on the fifth day, the grim discovery was made. Olivia's body was found in a secluded area near the edge of a dense forest, far from her usual running route. The scene was haunting. Her once vibrant figure now lay still, partially hidden beneath a blanket of fallen leaves, as if the forest itself had tried to conceal the tragedy. Her clothes were torn, mud streaked across her once bright running gear, and her hair, usually so neatly tied back, was now matted with dirt and debris. The bruises on her arms and legs told a story of a struggle, a desperate fight against the inevitable, but it was the injuries to her head that sent a shiver down the spine of even the most seasoned investigators. They were too severe, too deliberate to be dismissed as the result of an accident. This is when the breaking point for Ethan came, late one evening during yet another grueling interrogation session. Weeks of mounting pressure had worn him down, and the usually composed man was visibly unraveling. Inspector Collins knew she was close to a breakthrough. With each question, she pressed harder, methodically dismantling the lies Ethan had so carefully constructed. As the clock ticked past midnight, the fatigue and mental strain finally took their toll. Ethan's voice, usually measured and calm, trembled as he began to speak. The confession started haltingly, a disjointed mix of half-truths and attempts at self-justification. Ethan claimed that the night of Olivia's death had begun with a heated argument. He portrayed himself as the victim, insisting that Olivia had become enraged when he confronted her about the affair with Mark. According to Ethan, she had attacked him in a fit of anger, and in the ensuing struggle he had accidentally pushed her too hard. She fell, hitting her head on the edge of a table. But even as he tried to frame the incident as an unfortunate accident or an act of self-defense, his story was riddled with inconsistencies. Inspector Collins pounced on these contradictions, questioning how an accidental push could have resulted in the kind of injuries Olivia had sustained. Ethan stumbled over his words, his narrative shifting as he tried to align his confession with the evidence. As he spoke, a different picture began to emerge, a picture of a man who had felt increasingly trapped and threatened by his wife's independence and the crumbling of his control over her. The evidence pointed to a premeditated act, not a crime of passion. The injuries Olivia sustained were too severe to have been caused by a simple fall, and the timeline of events didn't match Ethan's account. Under the weight of Inspector Duval's relentless questioning, Ethan's story continued to falter, revealing more of the truth beneath his lies. The confession sent shockwaves through both families. Olivia's parents, who had once embraced Ethan as their own, were devastated. The man they had trusted and loved had betrayed them in the most unimaginable way. The realization that Ethan had not only killed their daughter, but had also manipulated them in the aftermath was a crushing blow. For Ethan's family, the confession was equally shattering. They had believed him to be a gentle, if somewhat withdrawn man who loved his wife. The revelation of his dark side, the secret life, the obsessive need for control, and the eventual murder was incomprehensible. Ethan's mother, who had always defended her son, was left grappling with the truth of what he had done. The psychological toll on both families was immense, leaving them to question how they had missed the signs and whether they could ever truly trust their judgment again. 
The community, too, was shaken to its core. The idyllic town, once a place where everyone knew and trusted each other, was now tainted by the realization that darkness could lurk behind even the most familiar faces. Ethan's confession, though it brought some answers, left many more questions in its wake. The man who had once seemed so unremarkable had revealed himself to be a master manipulator, capable of hiding his true nature even from those closest to him. The trial of Ethan Bennett became the talk of the town and beyond, drawing attention from national media due to the shocking nature of the crime. As the proceedings began, the courtroom was packed with journalists, curious onlookers, and the families of both Ethan and Olivia, each side representing a shattered world, forever altered by Ethan's actions. The prosecution, led by the astute and unyielding lawyer Françoise Martin, methodically laid out the case against Ethan. From the outset, Martin made it clear that this was not simply a case of an accidental death or a tragic mistake. She painted a picture of a man who had become increasingly obsessed with controlling his wife, whose insecurities and need for dominance had driven him to plan and execute a horrific crime. Ethan's secret apartment, the hidden bank accounts, and his monitoring of Olivia's every move were all presented as evidence of a premeditated act. The most shocking twist came during the trial's third week. The prosecution introduced a piece of evidence that had been uncovered only recently, a series of emails and notes from Ethan's computer that detailed his growing obsession with Olivia's affair and his fantasies of punishing her. These documents were meticulously dated, showing that Ethan had been planning his actions long before the night of Olivia's death. They included searches for methods to incapacitate someone quickly and discussions on various ways to stage an accident. This evidence completely shattered Ethan's defense. His attempts to portray the killing as accidental or as self-defense crumbled in the face of proof that he had coldly and methodically planned to kill his wife. The prosecution argued that Ethan had waited for the right moment to confront Olivia, knowing full well that he intended to kill her and then attempt to cover it up as a tragic accident. As the trial progressed, Ethan's demeanor became increasingly erratic. What had started as a calm, almost smug attitude shifted into desperation and anger. He lashed out at witnesses, contradicted himself under cross-examination, and at times seemed to retreat into his own world as if he couldn't fully grasp the gravity of the situation. The defense, faced with overwhelming evidence, could do little more than try to argue for leniency based on Ethan's mental state. They brought in psychologists who testified about Ethan's fragile psyche, his history of emotional instability, and his deep-seated fears of abandonment. They argued that while Ethan had indeed committed the crime, it was the result of a severe mental break rather than calculated malice. However, the jury was not swayed. After several days of deliberation, they returned with a verdict of guilty on the charge of first-degree murder. The conviction brought a sense of closure to Olivia's family, but it was a bittersweet victory. The woman they loved was gone, and nothing could bring her back. Ethan was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 25 years. As he was led away in handcuffs, there was a sense of finality in the courtroom, but also a lingering unease. The trial had answered many questions, but it had also revealed the terrifying reality that someone as seemingly ordinary as Ethan could harbor such dark and violent tendencies. The community, once so tight-knit and trusting, was left to grapple with the knowledge that they had lived alongside a monster without ever realizing it. Both the Bennett and Fletcher family struggled to move forward. Olivia's parents, heartbroken and disillusioned, withdrew from public life, finding it too painful to face the constant reminders of their daughter's tragic end. Ethan's family, reeling from the horror of what he had done, found themselves ostracized by the very community they had called home for decades. The psychological toll on all involved was immense, leaving deep wounds that time would struggle to heal. But the final twist came several months after the trial, when Sophie received a letter that Olivia had written before her death. The letter, tucked away in a forgotten drawer, detailed Olivia's growing fears about Ethan. She described how she had discovered his secret monitoring of her life, and how she had begun to suspect that he might be capable of violence, a chilling premonition of what was to come. The letter solidified the narrative of Ethan as a manipulative and dangerous man, someone who had been plotting his wife's demise while maintaining the facade of a loving husband. 